It's my honour to introduce Danny Danzi. How you doing, man? I've never been asked that before. I think that everybody needs to just listen to something and say, hey, I can listen to Theo singing about dragons all day, but you know what I mean? Yeah, that was pretty awesome. People are gravitating more towards the easier to hear more from us quicker. Hi, I'm Leo Ridium. It's my honour to introduce vocalist, multi-instrumentalist, songwriter, recording engineer, producer and mastering engineer, Danny Danzi. How are you doing, man? I'm doing greatly. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for doing this. <laughs> no worries. Did I get it all? Did I get it all there? Was that, did I cover Yeah, everything? that was pretty awesome. <laughs> no worries. I've been looking you up, obviously. So, um... <laughs> Now, listen, man, I want to get straight into the album. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, I mean, it was out se uh, September the 24th. It was released. Um, yeah. Tribulations, it's called. Um, I reviewed it. And, well, man, I, I was blown away. Honestly, I absolutely love the album. I, I just Thank can't I, I can't believe how cool it is. Um, for anyone who hasn't heard the album yet, Danny, um, give us the list. Give the listeners what to expect from the album. Um. In my opinion, this is just me. I, I, I have a different take on things than everyone else. I think that it is a, a mixture of, you know, I, I don't like to call it 80s. I just hate that term because that's <laughs> like a bad word almost. It's a shame. I love the 80s. I try to stay away from that. Um, yeah. But it seems like if you're if you sing well, if you do backup vocals or you have guitar solos, you're yeah. 80s. So, you're totally um, right. yeah, yeah. I, and I can't run from who and what I am. You know, I'm a product of that that 80s you know, the shred guitar players, the melodic people. But what I tried to do with this was I tried to give you a hint of something older with a more modern production without ruining the production the way the modern guys do it. Uh, I tried for more scaled down uh, recordings. Like, for example, if you were to listen to Danzy Land or Summer Lost in Time, I had effects all over the place. I had uh, lots of backup vocals, whisper tracks. I didn't do any of that. It's mm. pretty scaled down where it's a set of drums, a bass guitar, two rhythm guitars, and usually a lead guitar. Um, the backup vocals would be, you know, sometimes my voice and then a high or my voice and a low, and then maybe on a chorus, a high, a mid, and a low, where on the other albums, I would stack them all over where it sounded like this group of people. Uh, I only did that one time on this, and that's on the song, Where Do We Go? There's probably close to 100 vocal tracks on the breakdown section wow. of that if you get a chance to listen to it and it, and it kind of goes in around, you know, one part starts singing and then the other part starts singing. And, uh, but other than that, I, I wanted to, I got to evolve, you know, a lot of the melodic rock, uh, AOR type guys, they want the same albums over and over again. For some reason, there's these people are, some of them are just totally stuck in the eighties and I get that and I love it. And I wish it was the eighties too, but I think I have to show growth and evolution. If I did the same songs, you know, like uh, Europe, everybody wants a final countdown album yeah. every year from them, you know, or Def Leppard, do the same stuff over and over. Yeah. I'm trying to evolve. I think that's what makes me an artist. So I think on this album, to answer your question, uh, long story long, I failed brevity school. Um, <laughs> you're going to get a, a bunch of everything. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, I, all... You know, all the things in my career that I've done, you know, kind of rolled up, up into one. It's going to be sometimes a modern sound, sometimes an AOR sound. But to me, it's just good music. And, and I think that's what we need to classify it as. I think you're totally right. You know, I mean, it's funny because I obviously I try to do I try to cover as many new releases as I can. I, I, I literally try and do every one that comes out in that melodic rock and AOR genre. I, I, I work my ass off to try and cover them all. And I'm, I probably mention 80s so much, if not too much. And I, I, I know I did it reviewing your album as well. But um, it's sometimes it, it, it's a bit sad, but I feel like it's good to promote some people. That's what they want to hear. And if you don't say 80s, 
Right. They're not interested, and that's so sad. I actually believe, and we're going to get onto the state of the music industry later on, and ask you a couple of questions. But um, I actually believe that in a few years, I'd love to, and I've started doing it now. And I, when a band, when I do a review, I like to say this album sounds like, and I mention a new band rather than Def Leppard and whoever it is. And I think we will get to the stage like that because I think, you know, even though it's not as popular. I think the bat, the music we're getting now, some of it is just mm -hmm. as good as we got back then anyway. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would agree. And, and you know, I, I think that everybody needs to just listen to something and say, hey, this is good instead of, well, this sounds 80s. Well, yeah. what makes it sound 80s? Like I've always uh, hated the term hair metal. Well, what does hair have to do with metal? If a band's yeah. good, a band's <laughs> good. You know, I, I don't know. I took everything to heart. Because to me, it was an art form that I was trying to get a piece of myself out there to people. And that's what this album was about. I just wanted to give you a modern sound, sort of kind of, with stuff that you could relate to, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're definitely right. I mean, I, we, we spoke after I reviewed the album. We didn't speak before. I reviewed the album. I sent you the, um, the link to watch it. And we've been uh, speaking. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> it was an no, awesome no, thank album. You. Honestly, it's an awesome album. And, and Thank you. And I mentioned 80s then, I think I did. And um, we sort of spoke and I, I went back to the album straight away to listen to it. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't be more right. There's some, um, it's melodic all the way through. And I think that's why myself and other people say 80s because it's so melodic and it's so catchy. But um, there's definitely, there's a lot of music on your album, which is a sometimes it, it um, I, I think some with some albums, there's too much music. Sometimes you've got a long album there, but but you've got so much variation with those songs. It literally flies by. And where you haven't had a release for a while, I can I can deal with a long album because I just think you know you probably wanted to get it all out there, and um, I think that's a good thing. But it has to be interesting to have a, an album that long, and you really smashed it out of the park, man. With those. I mean, there's so many different uh, things to it, although it's all melodic and under that, I would say melodic rock, hard rock genre. It's, you know, there's so many different styles in there as well. Really yeah, blown I, away. I tried for that. I tried to, we, well, we tried to be versatile, the guys that wrote it with me. And, uh, you know, the weirdest thing is the melodic rock people are liking all the melodic rock songs where we were hoping the songs like, say, uh, Shameless or mm. uh, Restitution, American Dream, um you know would be more welcome or hanging on is yeah. very modern but yet it's got a massive hook so yeah. i mean there's there's hooks all over the place in this stuff but i think people are gravitating more towards the easier ones where there's other songs that we did that the band is playing literally playing their instruments you know i didn't want to do the same one two three four mm. you know the verse is coming the chorus come you know a solo is coming we tried to be a little unpredictable yeah. we tried to be a little bit more musical in in the wrist that we were playing and and uh you know that's what we went for but if you look at you know the streams the newer stuff that we like nobody's liking in the aor world and that was one of the reasons mm. i didn't want to release to the aor world because i knew that they would like the first five songs you yeah. know that i to, in my opinion the first five six might be that melodic rock sort of mm. 80s kind of sound and to me the biggest 80s one is is uh uh cold hard and dangerous and we did <laughs> that purposely with all the cliche rhymes that yeah. was purposely done you know but all the rest of them um are very modern sounding in my opinion without using the modern production where it's hyper compression and all the stuff you and i had talked about that we hated about modern you know what I oh mean? without a doubt mate yeah without yeah. a doubt and it's is this right i mean i've been reading about the album obviously without talking to you as well it's a concept album of some sorts is that right yeah. yep tell us a bit yeah. about the concept on it then mate okay basically uh, here's what happened I'll, I'll i'll try to make it there's really no way to tell this story short but uh two friends of mine joey and guy defalco um a guy's the drummer, Joey's a bassist. Uh, we got together in like 2010 and decided, hey, let's just write songs and see where it goes. I had been heartbroken from my last release, Dancing Land, with MTM Music going bankrupt and not even telling me about it. I didn't want this anymore. That was 2004. And uh, so, like I said, 2010 comes around. We decide, let's get together one day a week and, and see what we come up with. Let's just write. There's no releasing anything. Let's just see where we go. 
So seven years later, <laughs> we actually had the pre-production done. We, we, and we have a lot of songs. So hopefully you're going to hear more from us quicker because oh, wow. there's got to be a hundred song ideas. I'm wow. not kidding you. Oh yeah, we, we wrote like crazy. But we grabbed these 15 that just seemed to all gel together. And, you know, when we started writing the lyrics, they were about our lives, like everything that we had done. And the guys were supposed to play on it with me. They originally, like I have pre-production I could share with you where they actually played on it. <laughs> so what you've heard me play was me trying to capture them in spirit. You yeah. know, I had to play the drums and the bass for, for months before I could actually track anything. I mean, I play drums in my studio for clients. I play bass, but not like these guys. These guys are great. So I would say 90% of what you're hearing is their parts that I, you know, that I tried to cop to the best of my ability. Um, so like I said, seven years, we're, we're in good shape. Uh, 2018, I believe rolls around or, or, or 27, whatever it was, uh, the drummer and I guy, we had a talk. They are bit, they're in a business. They, they, uh, uh, do construction work. They could, they just couldn't come and, and play on the stuff. <laughs> so, um, I said, I don't know what to do. What do you do with all this great stuff? I've been writing all this time. Am I going to call and hire people? I, I didn't know what to do. My fiance says, you do it. You can play all the instruments. So she talked me into it over the holidays. Um, I believe January the 2nd, 2018 is when I started tracking. And I finished it a year and nine months later. And, wow. uh, but it's all about the tribulations. Uh, and I named it that. It was They never uh, had much in a hand of what happened once we kind of separated and we didn't part on bad terms. We just mm. kind of parted, you know, and, and, and during the separation, I was stuck with everything, certain things they didn't finish with me that I had to finish on my own. There's a lot of myself thrown in that too. So to me, the whole thing was a tribulation and all those songs are parts of our lives. I've got to do with us. I've got to say though, mate, um, I mean, you could say it's a, I hate the word because there's so many of them, but sort of a project because you're on it on your own. Mm. But, mm. but honestly, I wouldn't know unless you, you know, I, I found out that you did the whole album on your own. You actually told me, you confirmed that. Mm. Cause I think, I think on my review, I, I got a bit mixed up and said the guys are on it because they were songwriting on it. And, but mm. it doesn't sound, it sounds like a band. That's what I'm saying. It sounds mm. the energy because you, with these projects, as you know, and um, sometimes the energy saps out of it because it doesn't sound like a band in the studio, you know, and, you know, it's like this. sometimes now you get, a, there's a singer in Brazil, there's a guitarist in Sweden, there's a, and they don't even meet and they make an album, but you can tell sometimes that it's it's not got the energy there. Right. Honestly, listening to your album, you, you just can't tell that from the first track, and, and I've got to say one thing as well, that it's such a fun album as well. And I think that, I think that's sometimes missed in music now. You yeah, know, and I, that's what I, I really do. do. That accountable you know, I, song just makes me smile as soon as the album comes. <laughs> Honestly, it really has got some energy awesome. and fun to it. And, you know, I, I think a lot of time fun's missed in music these days. I think bands are bringing it back to a song. That's right. That's yeah, right. I think that, you know, you have to just go with what you feel inside. And that's what we did. You know, we never sat down and said, let's try to make the most modern album we can, you know, so we can shop it to major labels or let's do that. I said, let's just write what we write. Whatever comes out, comes out. I'm working down and crushed inside. Can't bring myself to believe on your life. It hurts to hear you say the Lyrically, we just wrote about what we we felt like and what we did, you know, uh, experienced in life. Uh, some of it, like the song Forever, was pretty much, uh, you know, about losing someone that you love. I lost both of my parents. And so I tried to share my feelings along with those that maybe didn't have 
the luxuries that I did. I was fortunate enough to hold both of my parents' hands when they passed away. Mm. Where somebody gets a call, your father died, your mother died. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm glad I wasn't that guy. I was there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And and you know, so a lot of it was my experiences and other people what mm -hmm. maybe they were lacking. And the message is reach out because you know forever is promised to no one. You know, and well, it's, that, it's, that's the whole thing is uplifting like that. That's the good thing I know now. I mean, I, I, I you can listen to in rock music you've got so many genres of music that cover lyrically cover fantasy and all that there's nothing like a lyric that can mean something to you as well right you know what i mean i mean i could listen to dio singing about dragons all day but you know what i mean but um there's not sometimes when someone says something that relates to you that means even more doesn't it yes so. and that's what we went for and the other thing too to answer your question about uh the length of the songs one of the reasons for that was I didn't know if I would ever write with these guys again. We had our separation and I did all this stuff myself. You know, these guys are busy. They have an awesome construction business. I thought maybe never again. So if I wouldn't have released, released this body of work, what would have happened if I would have written with other people or myself? You get songs that don't sound like they fit on the album. So I said, yeah. you know what? This is the whole thing that I did with the DeFalcos, you know, from the beginning to the end, get it out there. And, and at the end of the day, if I never put out another album again, and this was my last and final, I'm content with that. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that's how much I felt I put my all into it. And the guys did too, you know, writing every lyric, writing mm -hmm. all the parts that we did. And that's why it was so long. And we wanted to do a concept album. We were trying to bring that vinyl thing back. You got to see the original album cover, which uh, the, the label got rid of. As a matter of fact, they didn't like it because the way we had it formatted, it would have came out to about 22 pages, where I think we're 12 <laughs> pages now. So yeah. they weren't happy with that. But I had all these pictures and illustrations and, and all this other cool cover art that we couldn't have, you know. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm sad that that didn't get on there. There was pictures of me playing each instrument and and it was really cool. You know, mm -hmm. all these different designs that we had to, uh, you know, illustrate each song, kind of like the front cover, what you see with the name of the songs, but yeah. we had other stuff inside that just, you know, I was trying to bring that vinyl mm -hmm. thing back to CD, but they didn't go for it. So it got pulled. Well, I must admit, I mean, the, 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 the cover itself, I was going to ask you about the artwork, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, the cover itself does still bring back those, it looks like, oh. uh, yeah, very nostalgic to me. When I looked yeah. at the cover, I thought, well, no, I haven't seen a cover like that. And I'm going to put the, you know, I'll put a picture of the cover up while I'm talking now yeah, so cool. people can check it out. But yeah, very different to yeah. what we're getting as well. The same old, you know, you get the same old covers now, don't you? That look, you know, you can't tell bands apart now. That's right. the thing. So yeah. very and cool cover. i to that too, if you're interested. I have a cool story about that I can share with you. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have a, a very good friend of mine, Lenny Strauss, who was the artist that did that. I contacted him. And I figured, you know, the guy's been a great artist, but this could be a chance for him to reach out to the world and show what he's capable of. And uh, I told Lenny, my first concept was with this whole tribulations thing, I wanted like a, are you a Game of Thrones fan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I wanted me in the middle with a guitar or something. And, um, but I wanted demons and angels, like a battlefield getting ready to fight with half of my face being an angel, you know, angelic, mm -hmm. and half of my face being a demon, because I was stuck in the middle with the tribulations. Mm -hmm. And Lenny said to me, Dan, that looks like a heavy metal album. You're not <laughs> doing metal. You don't need that. <laughs> and we totally threw that in the trash can and yeah. started thinking of this other stuff, you know? So between he and I, we came up with this thing and it just came out great. I said, dude, that's it. You know, and he, yeah. we knew it as soon as we did it. We and we worked almost a year on the cover art. That's no kidding. With with going back and forth, back and forth, back. And forth, it was just amazing. And and Len's a, a great artist. He's got patience like you can't believe. You know, now I don't know. I'm I'm sure he wouldn't give anybody else the deal that he gave me. <laughs> he was a drummer in one of my old bands, Passion. So you know, we've we've kept in touch. And uh, the guy can still play if he ever gets you know a, a chance to go out and play again. But he's a great artist and. Uh, you know, I hope that this opens the door for him, you know, to, to do some work. So he's on my Facebook page. Len Leonard Strauss is his name. And uh, he's, he's a great guy to work with. So that's, you know, how we came up with that. He helped me. Yeah, I mean, it reflects a bit of the, for me, a bit of the fun 
me also in the album as well. It looks the, the album cover yeah. looks fun, and it should reflect the music a little bit. So it shouldn't be thrown exactly. off of what the album actually sounds like. It's, it's yeah, very a very cool cover indeed. So um, thanks. Um, production. So you're a producer mm-hmm. and engineer and all. all that. So um, I, I love the sound of the album. I, I just Thank think you. it sounds huge, and that's a big thing for me. I, I really do listen to what an album sounds like. I think it's so important. You've, you've got some real energy in that production. And I know that hell, I know producing an album is not, it's not just the instruments. It's the, it brings the energy on as well, doesn't it? I so, I mean, um, at, well, you, I, I take it you're really happy with how it turned out sonically as well. I can be honest with you. It is the only thing I've ever done in my life that I can sit back and say, there is nothing I would do to change that. I mean, and I listened and, and, and dealt with this thing for so long. Uh, my first, complete master job was i believe october of 2019 and i just let it sit and and uh, i made a few little tweaks after like three months of giving it a break and i said i know that's it you just know when you start playing it everywhere and it sounds good and it maintains that same quality you know you have it whether it's a boom box in my car in my truck wherever i'm listening to it just sounded great. And, you know, so then I'd stay away from it for a little bit and then listen again. And I would just smile and say, that's it. There's nothing I would do. There's not one thing I would change on that. So yeah, man, I am completely happy for the first time in my life. You know, and I'm hoping people listen to that and maybe they'll benchmark their mixes on mine now. You know, that's, that's my hope that, that it, you know, maybe inspires somebody else to do that, you know? It does. It really does sound great. Thank it really you. does. So um... it wasn't easy. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, I'll, bet. I, I, I'll tell you though, in a sense, it is easy. Um, if you get the right sound before you hit that record button, mm. it is what it is. That's what you're going to get out of it. If you sit mm. there and play with instruments to make them sound good, you're never going to win. You know, that's the thing you have to know what justifies good sounds. You have to have the gear that translates back to you. So, you know, something's right. You know what I mean? And a lot of guys don't have that. That's why they struggle with mixes. So I I think that I had that, that great front end, everything sounded good before I did anything. I could have taken all the effects off everything and given it to you raw. And I still think the album would have, would have spoke volumes, you know? So that's the key your performances and the instrumentation that you capture before you do anything has to be right. Without that. And you going back to what you said, I mean, no, it's definitely not a metal album. You're talking about the artwork and, and yeah. you said like, but I'll tell you, there's some right heavy riffs on this just oh, to, let every, to let everyone know who's watching this interview. It, no doubt about it. There's some great guitar heavy yeah. riffs. I mean, they are, really like you know I, I was blown away by some of the riffing on here so it's yeah. definitely a good it's, it's a guitar album through and through you know for me yeah. um the guitars were up there in the mix and there's some great playing from yourself so thank you so much i appreciate that i wouldn't say it's a metal album but it's got some metal touches for sure it was, it's, oh yeah it's difficult to say in it but i mean the genres i mean you're so right I mean, there's so many, so many different genres these days. Some some people would say it's even bordering on metal. I would say some of the riffing is, but the songs oh, yeah, themselves, absolutely. the songs themselves, I would say it's a melodic hard rock album. But it's hard to try and pinpoint genres these days, isn't it? I'm glad genres yeah. are. I'm glad genres are about, to, so we know what to look for in music. Because sure. you know, if it wasn't for genres, I'd right. be listening to so much music and be turning it off every second as soon as someone yeah. screams and shouts i'll be like no 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 <laughs> so yeah. at least i know what to look for so that's, that's what i i classified it as hard rock slash metal because there is metal yes. there's there's definitely metal influences and in, definite in, in sounds and stuff on there for sure so right there um so danny you've been obviously the album is all then you've been working on it for a while for quite a few years so I was going to say, and I think I know what your answer is because we we you've spoken about the production as well. But obviously, working on it that long, and now it's actually finished. Mm-hmm. Are you? I don't know if you're a perfectionist. I reckon you're a little. You are a little bit. I mean, even listening to the album, it, it, it does sound like you. It sounds like you've you've really gone to town on the details. You know, musically, everything about it. So. Are you happy now? Even though like you've been working on it all them years, sometimes it's hard, I suppose, if you've been working on songs that many years. Are you totally happy with the album? I am. I think it's a great album. That's good. I'll be seriously now. It's going to make my top list of the, uh, you know, oh, at the wow. end of the year. Yes. 
without a doubt. But what about yourself? I want to know what you are. You totally happy, or are you oh, like? Yeah. Are you nitpicking now? Are you like, oh? No, I, I I still don't hear anything that I would change. Um, it's been the only CD and in my Jeep for probably I don't know two years now, and wow. um. There's every time I listen to it, I don't, I never say, ah, oh, I should have fixed that. Why did I do that? Oh, I should. It's never nothing. I, I'm totally happy with, with everything. Uh, I'm glad that it's done. You know, I was really afraid to take that whole monster on. It's, it's, you know, what happens? You're, um, you get too close to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes, and you can miss the obvious. I did have two people that listened to it that were my outside source of ears. Uh, my friend Mike Picozzi and uh, my friend Sal Tomasello, who I actually did a project with. You got to check him out when you get a chance. The band is Red Figurehead, and he's only doing a five song EP. Um, I would call it melodic rock with a tad of punk in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I did all the guitars, all the productions. It's really cool. It's something that you, you'll really you'll enjoy, I think. It just mm -hmm. makes you kind of go like this. You know, you can't <laughs> help. But uh, yeah, I, I I am totally totally happy with everything. I I wouldn't change a thing right now, and I, but I am glad that it's done because it, it was like a monkey off my back. It really was. <laughs> you know, when you look at all the things you have to do, like I had this big checklist of things, and um, certain things I was very anal with. I'm a perfectionist with certain things, and then other things I'm not. Because the one thing I learned by uh, doing some shows, you know, um, in 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 the UK, there were a few people that you know, it said to me, you're so perfect at times, it's almost like a robot, you know, where in my mind, I didn't think that way. When I play a show, you want to see me play what's on the album, right? Mm. So that's what we did. We really geared up. And this guy said, nah, sometimes you got to have a little dirt under your nails and, and mm. kind of let it flow. So another thing I try to do on this album production wise, I didn't go for total perfection on certain things. There's a few things that are a little loose, um, that you probably won't notice because they're not, you know, anything that leaps out, anything that would have left out, I would fix, but, um, I didn't grab the drums and quantize them perfectly to a grid, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like everybody else does. So it has this robot, my flams, my, my drum fills wouldn't have sounded right. As soon as you start adding in those fake elements and those tools that we have today that make things perfect, then you start to sound like a robot. And that's why I think, um, you had mentioned that it sounds like a whole band is playing on it. Oh, yeah. I have certain things you got to play till you get it right. Other things, you get it as close as you can and say, you know what? It gives <laughs> it that that human feel. You know, you listen yeah. to some of the Van Halen albums. Eddie wasn't perfect on things, and that's what made it great. So I think that's what the guys in the UK were telling me when I would play. They said, it's great. You're delivering the CD, but loosen up a little bit, man. <laughs> you know? and. Yeah. and I took that, you know, for what it was worth and applied it here in a sense, you know, uh, Dandy land was way more meticulous. That album was, was crazy with, with, you know, uh, me trying to be a perfectionist, but this one um, it's there, but in places where it needs to be. I was going to actually say, I'm glad you've just mentioned Dandy land because I've, I've heard little bits of the past album, but not a lot because I'm just so busy with the channel and everything, but mm -hmm. mainly I want to listen to your new album. But um, so you, you've obviously ha happiest with this album compared to the others. And I, I don't, you know, I, I can see why. But um, how do you think it compares? What's the differences between your, you see, your one in 1999, which was somewhere lost in time. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of good things about that album, by the way. And I still haven't got around to listening to most of it, but I have a little bit of it. And 2003's Dandy Land. So what, what's the, the difference? What could people you know, think is the difference um, if they've heard their, their mother too? Somewhere Lost in Time is your typical 80s you know, uh, rock album. Um, early 80s when they used a lot of effects and reverb and that kind of thing. You know, uh, It's over-processed. I didn't know what I was doing as an engineer. I never expected to get a record deal with that stuff. It was just shopping as a demo. I think the songs are great and I think you'll love them too. I think you'll yeah. appreciate them for what they are. Uh, I played everything on that and mixed it and stuff. I didn't master it. So we had somebody else master that. I think Wayne Davis mastered that for me uh, who became my bass player on Danzy land. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, I think you'll like that album. Um, I love the songs. I started to re-record it because I hate the production and you probably won't like it either, but 
you'll definitely respect the songs and you'll you'll respect what I put in them. You know what I mean? The performances are cool. It's a little loose at times, but I think it's a great album for melodic rock people. They're they're going to love that. There's some really good tunes on there. And you know what? At the end of the day, that's the album that made people know who I was. You know, yeah. my uh, the record was Z Records, uh, the, the label that they promoted the heck out of me, man. They, they brought me over to play. Um, you know, I had a little mini tour with them and stuff, and and uh, you know, it, it was awesome. So that, that album put me on the map to let people know who I was. And Dandyland, I think, was a step up in, a, mm-hmm. in a, you know, a different direction because what my biggest thing is not to be better than anybody else. I want to be better than the last time you saw me, the last mm-hmm. album that you heard. My competition is here with me. So yeah. I wanted Dandyland to blow Somewhere Lost in Time away with everything, the album cover, the lyrically, the, the music. Mm-hmm. So where I did Somewhere Lost in Time myself, I had uh, my one friend, Andy, uh, played on uh, a little bit of, of the stuff and, and actually helped me write some songs. And uh, Dandyland is a full band. Yeah. So we all kind of sort of wrote those songs. Um, my keyboard player wrote most of the lyrics. My And then I have another writer, Andy uh, Slostad, who is actually in my live band today. Um, he wrote a lot of stuff. So what you heard was one guy on the first album who was a little one-dimensional and then you see what happens when you bring mm. a band in where other people have something to say. Yeah. And I think that's where your longevity comes, a band versus a solo artist. A solo artist is, you're just one dimensional unless mm. you're a freak of nature, which I'm not. I'm, I'm a song starter. I'm a song finisher. I'm a guy that can put the polish on, but I'm best when I work with other people. Yeah. So with Dandyland, it was a collaborative, you know, uh, group effort there. And uh, I think the production was definitely way better than Summer Lost in Time. It's a little dry, a um, little 90s kind of sounding. You know, I, I like a little bit more effects on my voice at times and, you know, just that kind of thing there. But I think it's a great album. The songs on that are great. It walks a- away from the 80s rock. See, to me, there's 80s rock and then there's melodic rock. Yeah. And that, that's the way I do it. Um, so where Summer Lost in Time or Split, as we call it, um, was very 80s and and predictable, mm-hmm. you know, baby, I love you songs where Dancy Land kind of graduated, got more mature. Uh, yeah. The songwriting topics were more mature. The lyrics were more mature. Everything was was better, in my opinion. The cover art is absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. If you look at that today, every every day I look at it, I find something different. They do. Oh, I've, I've, looked, I've checked the cover out. Oh, very, it, very it's, cool. it's insane. That, that guy did a great job. Uh, Eric Philippe. So, uh, you know, so those albums compared to what I have now, I think on this new one, I've showed evolution, mm-hmm. I, I, how I've evolved, how I've grown, even with writing with other people. Um, and I think that people will like my past works. It all depends where you're from. I think the more modern crew is going to like this and they'll like Dandyland where they might not like, some, like Somewhere Lost in Time. Uh the melodic rock AOR fans are going to like Somewhere Lost in Time and Dancy Land and maybe the first five or six songs on Tribulations. Mm-hmm. It all depends what you're into, you know what I mean? But I think I, I've shown growth, growth and evolution with each one. There's been a lot of good feedback from people who watch the channel. A lot, I get a lot of people message me 
on Facebook about the album, you know, just blown away by it. So congratulations, man, on the album. Thank Absolutely you. superb. Oh, I just wanna I wanna step away from the album a little bit, the new one. Just I was just thinking about you. So your first two releases, 1999 and 2003. Mm -hmm. I mean, man, what was it like? Like trying to get on in a time when like, you know, melodic hard rock music, if you like, wasn't exactly the in thing. Was it hard for you back then to get, you know, anything on the go really at that time? I mean, 99, that's new metal then, wasn't it? Really? That was the new metal time. What how did you manage to secure something then, way back then? Well, the, the biggest thing that I guess, uh, it depends where you're from. It was only like that in the States. We found that, you know, in England, you know, Europe, there was there was a bit of a scene. You know, there was mm. uh, the guys like Bob Catley and 10. And, yeah. you know, these guys were still doing well. Man of War, um, you know, they, they had some great stuff going on. So I remember... Uh, I had never tried to shop anything before. And I, I met this guy. It was, uh, I'm good friends with the guys from Heaven's Edge. Um, oh, Reggie yeah. Wu was one of my, my, my good friends, the guitar yeah. player. And uh, I was over his house one day. Um, they had just gotten dropped from their label with their second album, huh. I, I believe. And uh, he was setting up a studio and I was helping him, you know, set up his mixing console. And uh, he had said something about this guy you know, that made this beautiful Heaven's Edge website for him for free. And the guy lived in, in Sweden. So I checked it out and I thought it was amazing. They had all these, uh, you know, things that, you know, recordings and stuff. And Reggie couldn't figure out where they came from. You know, they were, they were really cool. So anyway, when I got home, I looked this guy up and I sent him an email. And I said, I just got to tell you, man, you're awesome for what you did for these guys. And didn't ask him for a dime. You know, he, he, he still, uh, you know, runs their site, I believe. And uh, he became a good friend of the band. But he said, and I told him I was a musician. And he said, you should try to get a deal. And I said, I only have seven songs done. I don't, you know, here. And I, and I sent him some of my stuff to listen to. At the time, Real Audio was the player. Do you remember that Real Audio player? No, no. I don't uh, remember that's how he played MP3s. Or, or, <laughs> and, and it converted them into this Real Audio player. Yeah. So I, I sent them to him and he says, this is great, man. You ought to try to shop a deal. And he sends me all these record label, like contact, you know, uh, addresses and all the people to talk to. So that's how I got introduced to yeah. even knowing there was a scene over there. So he gives me the, what we used to call the big five uh, record labels. It was Z Records, MTM Music, Escape, Now and Then, and Frontiers. Mm -hmm. And uh uh, I sent everybody a demo CD and I contacted them and said, this guy said, I can contact you. And, uh, you know, just to let them know I'm sending a package. They all wanted to, to hear the package. About two weeks later, I get calls from all five of them that they're interested in working with me. And we're going crazy. I remember my mom and I doing a happy dance. You know, you hear all these English accents and, and guys <laughs> and it's like, wow, this is real. And this one guy says, Danny, you're going to be a fucking star, mate. And I was like, oh, you know, and that's when it hit us that, you know, wow, this is like real. So yeah. Z Records offered me a great deal. They gave me a nice advance of money. And that's how I got involved in that. And Z Records had a nice handle on everything. We had some great artists, you know, uh, Savannah, Great King, Rat. Uh, what was the band that, that John Sykes was in? Blue um, Murder. Before, before uh, Blue Murder or White Snake, Tigers of Pantag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty Spanish. That yeah. band was yeah. signed to us. We had Pontus Nordgren, who played a lot like Inge Momstein. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Great King Rat. Oh gosh. Um, it's, it's funny you should say. It's funny you should yeah. say, Danny, because we, I do a show every week with um, two subscribers called All Killer No Filler Total Frustration. Right. So mm -hmm. we we basically go through every year, and we get. 10 or 12 tracks together and we have to match up the tracks oh, with wow. the with the original track listing which is a and you can't choose two songs off of one album so it becomes mm -hmm. uh, it comes really frustrating the total frustration bit is just perfect so, but it has to be like your favorite tracks from that year right and of course i lost my way like many rock uh, metal fans in those years i mean that didn't lose my way i just got into the the grunge scene a little bit and the new right, metal right. scene. Oh, I sort of I left the melodic hard rock stuff behind. And the, the, one of the guys on the channel, uh, Dom, 
who, who does it with us, he never left it alone. So he all those underground bands, he's meant he's mentioned them to me. I'm saying not heard that, not heard that, not heard that. But he carried on through listening to them all the way through those dark years, you could say. Yeah. And it's yeah. amazing how many bands there are. And they were good, you know, on those labels, and yeah. because you'd never heard about them because everyone was promoting Limp Nirvana. Biscuit, Limp Biscuit, <laughs> and the <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> yeah, it was a tough scene, but you guys always provided a scene. It was pretty big, and then we had yeah. like I don't know if you know Andrew McNeese from MelodicRock.com. I, I look at uh, the Melodic Rock site. I visit to read reviews and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. he's you know uh, helped us create a scene as well. He's got an awesome mm-hmm. notice board that you can be a part of or some of the, you know, the rock star guys, the real rock stars yeah. hang out there, you know? <laughs> so, it, I mean, I think that you guys helped create a scene for us that wasn't there. It was nothing here. We had Beavis and Butthead totally destroying yeah. anything that was good, you know, bashing on Winger. How yeah, can you exactly. bash on oh, Winger? No. Oh, no. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. all right. So maybe their first album was a little bubble gummy, but still there's great stuff on there. You can't take totally that agree. Totally you know? agree. And then they just got better as they went along, I think it's a great band. Even like I said, their first album was still awesome. Yeah, so, I totally, totally agree. It's one of the, the, the that's the sad thing that is, you know, uh, yeah. uh, and people still take notice of that now, which is really, really sad. But um, yeah. so what do you reckon on the music industry now? I mean, we spoke, I said to you quickly, I think that the music now from a lot of the bands is better than what we got, you know, in those, I know we say say eighties, but man, I mean, some people won't even listen to bands now. And this, you included. There's some great music, man. I mean, people are really missing out and won't give them a chance. I, the trouble is, it's never going to be what it was, and as big, it's not going to be all over MTV and all that. We know that, but sometimes that might be a good thing because it's never going to implode like it did. In my opinion, it'll never get too big for itself, will it? And hopefully. This melodic hard rock, as we call it, will be there all the time now, you know? Now, I, I think the biggest thing is um, mainstream radio. I, I don't know how many people actually listen to it anymore, but there's still quite a following there. And what they're playing is really bad, really bad. And yeah. in my opinion, there's only a few bands, you know, that I would listen for. So that forces people to search for stuff, mm-hmm. you know, whether you have, uh, the, the, you know, the Sirius satellite or, you know, whether you're streaming, um, you know, there's a lot of good bands out there, but you have to search for them. Yeah. But the other thing is, um, we can make this as big as we need it to be. We have YouTube, which mm. could be your own MTV. So that's what I've been struggling with, uh, with videos for my album. I want to, you know, mm. take one of the songs and do a video. I wanted to do it before we released it, but I didn't know if I would be still popular enough to where anybody would even care. So before you spend a bunch of money on a video, you know, but ultimately you got to look at it like this, right? We can go on YouTube right now. And if you were to spend, which isn't a lot of money, $2,500 in a week, you may reach out to 800,000 people. Think about that for a second. For $2,500, that's almost a million people. I have never been subjected to a million people. And Mm. that's for doing it a week, you know, uh, you know, or, or five, I think that's five days, mm. you know, that you could get that. So that's something to really consider. And mm. then maybe you do one on Twitter or whatever. But mm. if, if you think about that, that's a lot of people to get in front of and you target what age range you want. So yeah. if you have a cool enough video, that MTV thing can blow up all over again. But yeah. It's your TV, not MTV. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's really important. And, and we need to do that. You know, people are on it on, on YouTube like crazy. Now, I don't know if you guys have it, but it's embedded into our cable plans now. Mm-hmm. So I can go upstairs on my television and click a button and YouTube opens up on my TV, you know, and it's, <laughs> yeah, the same as what you get here. Or yeah. now they have uh, services you can pay for. So yeah. YouTube is still the, the, the medium to go by. And if you pay to get on there, the sky's the limit. You know, those yeah. ads that are out there, you're reaching out to people so you can make it explode on your own, but you got to have a couple bucks. You know, I must, that, I must, a, I must admit the, um, lately the algorithms or whatever you call them are working for me. I'm, I'm getting suggestions that seem yeah, to sort too. of fit, seem to me fit well. now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, never used to, but they do now. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about just songwriting quickly, mate. Um, 
So we've spoken about like you, you and the guys bouncing off each other yeah. writing the songs. But how do you actually start writing a song? Do you is it a guitar lick? Is it a melody in your head? How do you actually start writing a song? It's always different. Um, you know, like for example, last night we wrote a song where I came up with a guitar riff, and uh, the guys, you know, filled in their parts, mm. and then this melody comes to me, and then we, you know, write gibberish words over that melody just so you kind of get your phrasing down, you know, and then you think about a topic, what you're going to write about, and and the song just pretty much does its own thing there. Other times, um, Joey can lay down a bass part, and we play to him. That's how we wrote uh, Restitution. Joey wrote the main riff for that. Uh, the same with uh, Do Me a Favor, the one that's not on the album. Joey mm -hmm. wrote a grooving bass part, and then I add to it, and then Guy adds to it, and then we come up with topics and and we just go from there, you know, but it's always something different. Now, other times I'll have a full blown melody, a chorus melody will come to me or guy guys, really great mm -hmm. lyricist. He'll come up with everything. I'm not really a good lyricist. I'm too, I'm too basic. Like, like, I don't know, you know, how Robert Plant, you can read stuff from him and, and take it like five different ways. Yeah. Abstracts, very like, abstract. Yeah. 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 You read my stuff, you know, that it's about I'm either <laughs> heartbroken or it's something political. I get into the whole politics thing, you know, with, with things that I don't like and, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. Like with an American dream, I'm, I'm bashing on how, you know, America is not an American dream. Like everybody mm -hmm. thinks it is, you know, I, me and my fiance work six days a week. Yeah. that's no dream just to have a roof over our head so yeah. if that's a dream <laughs> it's not much of a dream i don't live in a mansion i don't have a ferrari but i mean um you know sometimes you get the hook sometimes it could even be a drum beat you yeah. know um or or like i said a bass line or a melody or or a vocal and so it's always different there is no set way really we don't uh try to formulate what we're doing you know we just write a part and see where it goes and we have what's called spirit jams where we'll just sit in here and I'll just, you know, click record on the computer and we'll just play. And these things come out that are just awesome. And we'll say, OK, that's worth saving. Or, or hey, let's take a part from this and add it to this other thing that we were doing. You know, so uh, there's just so many ways that you can do it. And it makes it so cool when you put it together. It's like a puzzle and yeah. you're putting that puzzle together with all the pieces. So you must get the urge because you've been over in the UK. I mean, I'm not saying visit the UK now because it would probably cost you a fortune now, but I mean, you must get the urge to play these songs live. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. If there's a call for it, I'll pay for it out of my own pocket yeah. just to be able to see people and play for them and meet them and thank them. Oh, I can't wait. It, it's yeah. it's a great experience. Yeah, I'll come back in a heartbeat. When I close my eyes, we're together. World Trade Center went down, and I was like, "Don't send me home." You know, oh, wow. I waited my whole my whole life for this stuff. You know, I'll yeah. I'll stay here and in in you know whatever happens happens. I didn't have a wife. I don't have kids. You know, I mm -hmm. just had my my parents at the time. I'll play, and if a bomb goes off, God forbid, it was my time. I waited my whole life to perform for people, and that's what I do. You know, and that's what I want to do. So yeah, if there's a call for it. If it's a Danny Talabanzi tour and I got to go over there and play, I don't know about that because I don't know if I cut my head off. Or <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you want me to play somewhere? I'm there. Stay to work. So you um you come out when you come over to the UK, you did something called um is it a lot of there was a few bands together. Is it called Gods in the UK? That's right, isn't it? Uh, it was called the uh, yeah the yeah it was the Gods and then there was uh, Z Rock Z Rock. Uh, I didn't play at the Gods Festival. I was just like, I went there just to go, just to like shake hands and say hi and hang out with people and drink mm -hmm. uh, mass quantities of alcohol and uh, get drunk off of one pint because you guys have so much more alcohol in your beer than we do. 
<laughs> it's all it's all light over there, isn't it? It's all light, uh, yeah. little light and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You could probably drink a case here and, and laugh at me, you know. So I would drink whiskey. You know, I get the beer makes me bloated. But uh, yeah, I, I I had a blast, man. I I, I uh, absolutely love it over there. You know, I, I can't wait to go back. <laughs> Listen, I've been. I'm, I'm glad you you mentioned someone earlier on, and I, I actually. I've read a couple of interviews, I must admit, before I interviewed you. Um, and you mentioned Eddie Van Allen before in an interview. So, I mean, is he a big influence for you? But I mean, when he when he died last year, I mean, it, it hit a lot. It hit me and a lot of people I know quite hard. Mm -hmm. um, how about you? How did it affect you? Because I know you've mentioned him before, and you mentioned him oh. in our interview. I mean, is he a big influence on you? Eddie Van Eyden. and Andy Rhodes were probably my two biggest influences when I was playing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I never really tried to nail anything perfectly because I'm really not physically capable of that. I, I have a different tuning yes. for my guitars that um, no one, not many people use. I don't know of anyone that plays exclusively like I do. Like you have all these guys that are down tuning and stuff, you know, I've been doing that since I was, I don't know, man, 14 years old. It's the only way I know how to play 13, 12, whatever I was. I think I was 12 years old when I started playing or, or I, I was four years old when I started tuning in that goofy tuning and didn't pick it up again until I was 12. But um, yeah, I, I, I attribute a lot of what I've done to, you know, the tuning and I guess some of the weirdness from Eddie rubbed off. Um, he was definitely one of my main influences, sounds and, and stuff. And then I wound up playing in a Van Halen tribute band for a while. And that was really cool. Um, as far as his passing, by the time Eddie had passed, I was pretty upset with him. Uh, the whole stuff, you know, all that stuff with Michael Anthony that went down where they pulled him off the album and they fired him. And it just I just felt they treated him so poorly. And the guy never lashed out and, and gave his yeah. side of the story. You know, all he wanted to do was play with Sammy while the Van Halen brothers were doing whatever they were doing. Yeah. You know, and uh, that bothered me. And I, I kind of lost respect for Eddie there. Um, the only other thing I could say about his death was I, you know, I had hoped one day to meet him and mm -hmm. I never did, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, he was definitely my my he was my main influence. But the weird thing is, I don't think you hear I think you hear the result of him in my playing, but I don't think you hear it and say, Oh, that guy sounds like Eddie Van Halen. You know, like if I played you some of the stuff when I played in the tribute band, it sounds a lot like Eddie. I would say I was probably 80 to 90% on with it. I, I did, you know, 10% Danny, you know, 90% yeah. Eddie, or sometimes the 80% Eddie, 20% Danny, you know? So I added my flavor but it still sounded like Eddie. I had the sound. I had all the effects, all the things that he did. It, it was pretty realistic. I'll have to send you some stuff so you can hear it. But to be that much into a guy where you're doing the tribute to not sound anything like him, which I don't think I do at all. None of my songs have a Van Halen vibe about them. I kind of, I would say mm -hmm. more docking, if anything, that you yeah, know, I agree. is another, yeah. you know, uh, influence of mine. So, but yeah, it was, it was, it was sad. It, you know, I actually felt more, believe it or not, losing Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston than I mm. did Eddie Van Halen, if, if you can believe that. I just yeah. thought that they were, you know, um, true talents that, that, you know, not that Eddie wasn't, you know, but you can't smoke cigarettes like that, man, your whole life and not expect to have oh. something go wrong. I, myself yeah. included, I smoked for 34 years. And one day I woke up and said, you know what, I'm going to die. As yeah. soon as you find something wrong with you, it's usually too late. You know yeah. what I mean? So, oh, yeah, I, yeah I, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'll be nine years smoke free in March. And that's how I think I I sang the way I did on this album, mm -hmm. which I think I sing better on this one than I did on the other two, you know, um, because I'm so clean and free, you know. So, yeah, and you, you can't abuse your body all that and expect nothing to happen. Something no. has to go on sooner or later. I mean, there's a guy. You know, even you let that thing hang out of your mouth and you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which he did a lot. The smoke is, is just keeps killing you. But yeah, yeah it's, it's sad. You know, yeah. I, I, I was sad about it. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, saying about the, 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 the difference, there is a big difference in your playing. And I think with, when you listen to Eddie, it's almost like he's jamming a lot in it. 
make it up as he's going yeah. along almost. But um, yours is, I think, a lot more intricate. And your songwriting, especially, yeah, it's totally different than Van. Yeah. He's got that fun element, I'd say. That's what, you know, Van Hagen were fun to listen to. Absolutely. So, maybe not the Sammy years, but maybe, you know, not so much fun, but it was totally different then. But, um, yeah, I think that Sammy years, he got more serious, like the way I kind of write and play. Yes, and then, yes. You know, where the, the stuff with Dave was off the cuff and, and just, you Definitely. know, having fun. And I think that's what made him so great, though. And that some of the stuff that he came up with was like, it's, it's groundbreaking. There's a bit of Eddie, I think, in every guitar player. You, there's no way yes. that you can deny that, you know? I agree. There's something. Yeah. Okay, mate, we're talking about fun. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here. Okay. I hope you don't mind. So um, I do this. I haven't done many interviews, but um, I always do this. Well, this is my new thing at the end, if that's all right. So uh, I'm going to talk about, I want to, I want you to name a fantasy band, right? So you could be the singer or the guitarist, right? And you, this ain't, you're not just going to play with a band. We've got to name people here. So, so would you, first of all, are you going to be the singer or the, you can't be both. We, we got you could be a singer or a guitarist you're going to be the guitarist in your band but there's a few rules to this as well i, I, I let me right, warn you ahead. you you this has got to be realistic so you can't have anyone who's passed away They've, this has got to be this can actually happen you who you want to be either make an album with or be in the band with permanently or go on tour with that's up to you but you're going to be the guitarist that's the first yeah, question I've never, I've never been asked that before. I am totally <laughs> lost for who I would play. I, if I can be honest with you, the only reason I sing is because I couldn't find anybody else to do it. And I just got so sick and tired of dealing with lead vocalists, you know, they just have this prima donna drive me crazy. I mean, so I said, you know what, I'll do it. I'll do the singing and then we'll never have to worry about that. So I would really have to play guitar for somebody. You know, um, right, but, right, Danny. Listen, I'm writing this down. Danny, guitar, right. You've got to choose a prima donna vocalist, though. So, <laughs> who, who would you want to say you're going to record an album, saying you're doing another album and you get to choose who you want? Who do you want to be your lead vocalist? I think it would be a cross between Eric Martin or yeah. Dan Huff from Giant, had one of the best voices I ever heard. I love Dan Huff. I would say Dan Hoff, if he could still sing. I don't think he can sing anymore. The last time I saw them playing, he had a singer. I don't know if he does that because he can play guitar better. But, uh, yeah, I love Dan Hoff as a singer. I just think he's fantastic. Well, look, well, I'm, 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 I'm banging a few rules to you here. So, I mean, these can be in – if you have them in your band, they can sing perfectly. So don't worry about how he can sing okay. now. He's got the perfect right. voice. Yeah, I, I like him or that uh, – who is that guy that that sang with um, Lynch Mob the second album? Was that Robert Mason? Yeah, it's two of them in there. I always get them mixed up. I think Tony um, Logan was the first guy. Yeah, I didn't it was like Robert. It is, it is Robert Mason. I love the second Lynch Mob album, and people like diss yeah. on that, diss on it a little bit, don't they? Because of the oh, first yeah, album. That singing, uh, you know, I might go with him. He's a really yes. good singer, and he's know? a. I'll tell you what, he's a great singer now as well because he. Um, yeah. He's singing on a few things now. I think he sings yeah. on the End Machine album and yeah. another album as well. But very cool choice, Robert yeah. Mason, by the way. Okay. Oh, Miles Kennedy. I love Miles Kennedy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Favorite, you know. Paul Bridge, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, uh, for bass? Oh, boy. I like a guy that can really play the bass. Maybe, uh, but, and I, but I like somebody that has a good tone. I love Billy Sheehan, but I hate his bass tone. I just hate it. It just sounds like it's almost distorted, you know? He's a phenomenal player. I would probably have to go with um, maybe Stu Ham. Who's that? Who's Stu Ham? Stu yeah. Ham played with Joe Satriani. He's, oh, yeah. he's a studio musician. Yeah. Uh, I would go with Stu Ham or maybe Victor Wooten. Did you ever see him? Who's that? Who's he play with? Uh, he's a solo artist. Fantastic oh, bass. It does the pop slap. But yeah, I think I would go with Stu Ham. I like Stu Ham. I, I think that he's he's a great bassist, and he's familiar with the rock stuff too. Um, for drums, oh man, you, you gotta you gotta go with Mike Portnoy. I I, yeah. I I just I've always been a Portnoy fan. Yeah, I just think that he's like amazing, and he's a cool dude too. 
Yeah, he is. He is. He's very cool. Um, do you want a second guitarist, by the way, mate? Someone to jam with? We've got to back you up on the rhythm guitar, mate, while you do your soloing. Yeah, who would I get to play rhythm guitar? Or, or both two leads. You yeah, know, we obviously. could do both. Oh, boy. Um, oh, man. Somebody that's got a mean tone that knows how to, to, to play when you're supposed to play and hang back. Red Beach is really a good, well-rounded mm. player. I like the way he, he you know, played with uh, uh, not just Winger, but um, what's the other band? Wasn't he playing in White Snake? Yeah, he plays, really, he plays with Joel Hulkster in Whitesnake now. Yeah, they yeah, both he, them two guitarists, yeah. He, he really did a nice job. Even with uh, Doug Aldridge isn't with them anymore? Is I it, thought Doug Aldridge was a guitar player in that well, band. Joel Hulkster is definitely with them still. I don't know oh. if Red Beach is with them or Doug okay. Aldridge. I think I think it's um, Red Beach and um, okay. Joel Hulkster. Yeah, yeah, I, I like Reb. I, I think that he's always been a really good, well-rounded guitar player that, that he hangs in the pocket, and when it's time mm. to burn, he lights it up. Yeah, I, I like him. I would go with him. He's got a good tune. Or Warren Demartini. I really like him <laughs> too from that. Yeah, he's you know brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's let, let, let's do Warren. I like him. You know <laughs> what? You know what you're gonna do when you finish this. You, when we come off, you'll be like, oh, why didn't I? I should have chosen that. That's what you're gonna. Yeah. You, it's gonna drive you mad. Don't worry about it. You yeah, can always message. Good. You can always message me if you change your mind. But listen to this band, then Danny. Right? Okay. So we got you on uh, guitars. You and Warren D. Martini. Oh. That's brilliant, isn't it? Uh, Robert Robert Mason on vocals, Stu Ham on the bass, and Mark Portney on the drums. I mean, that's yeah. a band and a half, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Hey. If, we, if we add keyboards, oh boy. Oh, yeah, you can have keyboards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jordan Rudess is pretty cool from Dream Theater. I mm. like their first guy, though. What was his name? Kevin Moore. Mm. I liked him. I thought he was pretty cool. Paul Taylor was pretty good in Winger too. He was didn't he play a little guitar too at Reb and, and played keys on the first album. But yeah, I would probably have to go with Kevin Moore because Kevin, he's the he was the first Dream Theater keyboard player. He wrote more commercial stuff. You know, I don't want to do musical wank fests, man. I, I think that oh, yeah. Yeah. people just don't get into that. They don't get it. You know, I think you've you've got you can do anything you want as long as it's commercial. I think, yeah. you know, as long as you give them that hook. I think it's 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 totally and the, acceptable. And Dream Theater have done that. They've they've done yeah. that. But I mean, I don't know. Some of it's too much for me. I just get it for me. My head starts going like that, and then I don't yeah. know what to do. I'm like, well, what's going on now? <laughs> yeah, they change the timing up. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. It's a, you know, and and some of it is it's just too musical. And I, I get it. I'm a musician. I love that. But in small doses, even Ingve Malmsteen, as much as I love him, after like 10, 15 minutes. I, it's the same thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I yeah like you can ask it. I'll never forget. I had this friend that had, uh, I don't know if it was his nephew, this little kid, and he'd say, "How does Ingve play?" And the kid was like three, and they go, yeah. and it sounded just like it, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. cool in a sense, but not, you know. After oh, a while, it's yeah. overkill. But I do love him. I think he's got his place. Um, he was one of the first ones to play like that. When I first yeah. heard him, I pulled over to the side of the road. And I was like, what the heck is that? You know, he's, and, he's then, um, and then it sort of made sense when he got Jolene Turner. Oh, uh, the best album ever. And go. he couldn't keep them. Yeah. You know, oh, that's a great singer. I forgot all about him. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff, man. You've got Robert Mason, though. So that's all right. Yeah, I like Robert Mason. <laughs> I stick with him. Listen, man, oh, I hope you enjoyed that. I didn't put you on the spot too much. Absolutely. Man. No, I like being on the spot. You can ask me anything. I'm looking <laughs> <laughs> listen anything to say to anyone before we go mate no i i appreciate uh you know that that great review you gave me and that i got a chance to meet you i mean at the end of the day we each made a friend you know which i think is really awesome uh, uh we watched the video like three four times i spread it around and my friends were like wow this guy he really <laughs> likes you and it was a great feeling because yeah. you know we're not millionaires we can only go by people that like our music and when someone appreciates it and goes through the trouble like you did, I mean, that was like 15 minutes of praising, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I was blown away. I was like, man, I can't wait to meet this guy. You know, <laughs> and when I saw that video, I was, I was dumbfounded. I, my fiance, my, my friends, Joey and guy, they saw it. We were just like blown away that you would take that amount of time to, to, to do that, you know? So I'm glad it had a good effect on you. And uh, like I said, I'm glad we made we each made a friend at the end of the day. And I appreciate all you do for 
the artists that are out there busting their butts trying to to, to do something out there. It, Thanks, it means man. a lot. You that, know, that, that, that does mean a lot as well. It means yeah. a lot to me as well. So Absolutely. I mean, to tell you the truth, if there's if there's artists that are not, if you know, if it's not Iron Maiden or Metallica or you know, the, you know these bands that it doesn't really matter what if someone gives them a negative review does it it, it doesn't make any difference to Iron Maiden if I said the new Iron Maiden album was rubbish no one's going to really you know it's not going to affect them so I I just decide that if unless a band is millionaires and you know they're making it like them bands I and I hear a, an album from a relatively unknown or up and coming band and I don't like it I won't review it because I don't think it's fair because you know I don't want to put any negative reviews on a band that is trying to make their way in the music industry so if you, it, so if i'm actually reviewing an album like yourself that means i love it and i, I want to say it. it's not because i'm just trying to you know I, I say everything truthful and when something blows me away like there's been loads of them this year including you know your your, your album of yeah. unknown bands that are just you know they just blow me away when i listen to them so I just try and just promote it as much as I can. Absolutely. You know well, I mean? it's like what we learned at a young age. If you can't say anything nice about somebody, it's sometimes best not to say anything at all. You know, and, and it's just like how many times have you bought an album or, you know, one of your friends says, oh, you got to go get the new so-and-so album. It's great. You get it. You're like, this is garbage, yeah. you know, or, you know, they'll say, oh, the new album, it sounds like crap. You grab it. Hey, I quite like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's subjective. Yeah. Music exactly. is always going to be subjective. You know? Exactly, exactly. Listen, man, I've had a great time talking to you. I knew, I knew I would do. I knew I would do. So that's cool. <laughs> Same here. I'm, I'm so glad we did this. Thank you for the opportunity. And again, for all you do for all of us, man, it is greatly appreciated. And you are appreciated. No worries, man. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it, just one thing before you go. It's, I know it's available on streaming services. Is there physical copies available of the album? Yes, actually, there are. I don't know the URL, but I can send it to you. And I know I have it on my Facebook. It's like the musicshop.net uh, has it. And that is actually in England. So anybody ah. over, overseas will get it pretty quick. They've been shipping pretty quick, though. Uh, as long as you guys have, you know, uh, uh, wasn't there a petrol problem or something? You, you were having oh. problems? Oh, my, right that, there, right? that's that's just the media. That's just the media just done that in one foul swoop, just made yeah, everyone panic. Something. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, shame. So um, but, uh, I'll, I'll leave a link. Yeah, under, I'll under send you the link. Yeah. And that's the best place to get it right now. I know Amazon is also going to carry it. I think after uh, the 20th or the 23rd or something like that. I'm, I'm not sure, but, the, but I know you can get it at the musicshop.net. And it might even be a signed copy if they have any of those left. So oh, I, cool. I signed a thousand of them. And listen, yeah, and yeah, anyone, I, mean, I know I've already reviewed the album and recommended it, but honestly, anyone watching this interview, get this album. If you love melodic hard rock music with melody all over the place and mad guitar solos, you'll love this album. You really will. So thank you. Thank you so much, man. You're awesome. All right. Cheers, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey.